Hi everyone. So this year, the year 5783, Paula Skadolos, the year of, of great wonders. The Rebbe came to me in a dream on Lamed of. So it was the first day of Rosh Chodesh Elul on Erev my birthday, because my birthday is Aleph Elul, which is the second day of Rosh Chodesh Elul. And I've been thinking about it ever since it happened, trying to figure out how to convey this message and really what the message is. So the Rebbe came to me and said, you need to tell people to stop hiding behind the hide like the hide, like the animal skin, the snake skin. I, in the dream, I knew what the Rebbe was referring to, but I don't remember the exact word the Rebbe used. So I, I was standing there and in the dream, I'm thinking to myself, how am I gonna do that? I don't know what the Rebbe means. I, I don't wanna be irreverent, but I, I really need more guidance, I need to ask. <laughs> so at a certain point, I looked at the Rebbe and I said, should I make a video? <laughs> and the Rebbe just looked at me and his facial expression, the way I interpreted it was, you need to figure this out yourself. And then, and I don't know which part of the dream was more amazing, the Rebbe turned around and looked at me and said, I could do it myself, but then it will be bread of shame. And he walked out. He actually walked up a flight of stairs. I, I was in a house that I didn't recognize. So, so, and and then in the dream, I remember running over to a friend of mine and saying, the Rebbe just came to me in a dream. And then I said, no, it wasn't a dream. The Rebbe actually just came and spoke to me. And then I woke up and I'm lying in my bed and I'm like, whoa, I just had a Rebbe dream on Earth, my birthday. and ever since and I've just been thinking about it. So right now, currently, I have some thoughts since I've been meditating on it and getting advice about what it could possibly mean to share with you all. You know, in Chassidus, we refer to the body as the, the, the hide of the serpent, the serpent skin. And in general, this physical world is a place that we know hides Hashem. But we're not meant to believe that lie. We're meant to break through that concealment to get to the truth. It's part of the purpose of our creation. And there's different ways to approach it. So in terms of not believing in the external reality of this world as we see it at first glance and peeking beneath the surface and realizing that Hashem is right there, living with the miracles, which by the way, now that the Rebbe said we're in Yemos HaMashiach, I've, I've made a lot of videos about that. It's much easier for so many reasons, which is way beyond the scope of this short clip, to be able to experience Hashem and the miracles in our life in a way that we weren't able to so easily before. And I feel I really do explain this idea of living with miracles very well in the podcast that I did for Human and Holy. So if you want to PM me, I can send you the direct link or you can even just go to Human and Holy podcast and just search through for my name. But it might be easier if I just send you the direct link. And I speak a lot about what does it mean, I'll be Hasidus, to um, live with miracles and I give over a little bit of a sicha and also a mimer and then I tell a lot of personal stories. So that's one, one piece of homework if you are taking this message to heart to go and listen to that. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is this idea of converting the snake, right? Like, because Hashem put us in this physical world, in a physical body, with a certain perception of what it is that we're meant to break past and see past. And so what does that mean in our personal lives, like in our personal avoda, right? So the, the Rebbe gave a sicha, and I can also send you an article that was written actually on the sicha and on Chabad.org if you want that. It's short and pretty easy to follow. Where... The Rebbe is explaining this idea about converting the snake, okay? So 
What's the original snake? The original snake is the, the Nachash who came to Chava, which by the way, we're, we're coming to Rosh Hashanah, and this story happens in the beginning of creation, right? At the very beginning, the Nachash came and tricked her, right? So what's the idea of the Nachash? What's the trick? What's the lie of the snake that the Rebbe is telling us we need to see past? The snake tells us that we're gonna get pleasure and comfort and joy from things that are very temporal in nature and don't have any true substance to them, right? And anyone who's ever given into their Yitzhahara, it might feel good in the moment, but in the long run, it really doesn't do anything good for you, right? So some things require a little bit more foresight, look ahead a little bit to see the outcome of what's gonna be. And some things are very easy to see pretty immediately that it's, we're not gonna benefit, right? But how do you convert the snake, like our inner snake, our inner Itzahara, by telling it that the truest pleasure and joy and comfort in life is in serving Hashem. Meaning that, yes, we have to serve Hashem with Kabbalah soul, even if there's a mitzvah that we don't understand in that moment, so we still do it because Hashem told us to, but ultimately Torah and mitzvahs are here for us to have literally the best life. And that really is the geula. The, especially the first stage of Gula is Shlemas Torah and Mitzvahs, meaning we do Hashem's will and He gives us a beautiful life that makes it easier and easier for us to do His will. Meaning Torah and Mitzvahs equal the best life, physically and spiritually. You feel fulfilled inside and you have what you need on the outside. It's literally the true comfort, pleasure, and joy. But somehow our Yitzhar tricks us into thinking that the opposite is true, and it's not true. So the Rebbe says in the Sikha that really the conversion of the snake is just realizing that Torah and mitzvahs is literally the best life. You're not giving anything up, you're only gaining. And sometimes it requires a little foresight, and sometimes it's not so hard to see at all. And especially in our generation, especially in our generation, we can see it very easily because the world is just becoming easier and easier and more abundant and serving Hashem and doing what's right is really, it's, it doesn't even take Mr. Nefesh the way it used to in our generation. And on that note, I just want to say one thing on this that the Rebbe said, I could do it myself, but it would be bread of shame. What is this idea of bread of shame, right? We know there's a collective whole, the Jewish people have earns the Geula and, and even more so, right? The Rebbe told us so many times, the Gullus has been so long and we've been through so much and we've worked hard and we've had Mr. Nefesh. And overall, as a Jewish nation, we are ready for the Geula. There's really nothing holding it back, except we need to open our eyes. We need to be Makabal Pnei Mashiach Tzidkino. It's really just about us acknowledging, really. It's, it is not really so much more work to do, except our active participation and welcoming in this special time that we live in. And I was thinking like why, like this idea of the Rebbe not wanting the Geula to be bread of shame is really out of his Ahavas to solve for us. Because if you think about it, anyone who was resurrected, who lived 500 years ago or more, they worked hard just to survive. So the Geula is certainly not gonna be bread of shame for them. They're gonna like get out of their graves and just see this amazing world we live in and, and the entire Jewish nation on this amazing day of celebration. I mean, can you imagine? Like, I literally can't wait for this moment. I'm so excited. I'm like, Hashem, please. Like, I need to witness Tchis Amazim now. But for us who live in a generation of such comfort and such abundance, we live in Yemos HaMashiach, yet we don't have the Gula Shlema. The Rebbe is giving us the opportunity to be active participants, to utilize all the resources that we have to spread Yiddishkeit and to and to and to do Yiddishkeit with the most amazing amount of joy and gratitude to Hashem that we have this unbelievable opportunity to serve Him in these very special times. And in that way, with our joy, we actually macabre the times that we live in and we utilize it to make it happen faster and more. And please God, we should have the Gula Shlema immediately. And I wanna leave you with this one thought that um, there was a reporter who came to the Rebbe and he asked the Rebbe, what is your message about the redemption to the world? And the Rebbe responded, do more acts of goodness and kindness to greet Mashiach 
I don't remember the Rebbe's exact words, but it's either to bring Mashiach or to greet Mashiach. And the reporter looked at the Rebbe and said, um, so we should do more good acts of goodness and kindness to bring Mashiach. And the Rebbe said, just a little bit more, just a little bit more, right? So this, the Gula shouldn't be bred of shame. Obviously, Hashem doesn't expect more from us than we can do. And the Rebbe said many times it could happen in an instant and that we just need to do just obviously a tiny little bit more. And please God, just in merit of this clip, that I'm doing my part. The Gula Shlima should be here before you even see this. And if Chas Vashalom, it delays one more second, then make a hachlata. The Rebbe says in Parshat's farm, just our hachlatas alone. We could walk into the Gula with those. We don't even need to fulfill them. So please God, we should be celebrating the year 5784 in Yerushalayim with the Gula Shlema immediately.